Hello everyone. So now we will see this video where we will study basics of control system. Okay. Some basics of control system. What is order? What is time constant? All these things we will see. What is zero and what is four? So what is a trans transfer function? I guess I have used this term uh, before as well. So what is transfer function? Transfer function is simply output by input. That's it. Let's just assume I am making this circuit. This is R. This is one upon C S. Okay. This is V naught S and this is V in S. So basically, my transfer function would be V naught S by V in S. But one thing is there with no initial condition. So initial condition should be nullified. Let's just assume if 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 it was having initial five volt voltage, so I would have written five by S. So this should be zero. If it was having some initial current in case of inductor, there will be some initial current. So anything if it is having initially, that should be nullified. So output by input with zero initial condition. This is what we call transfer function. What is pole and what is zero? So our transfer function can be written in this form, right? Numerator upon denominator. That like I wrote one upon one plus R C S. So what is numerator? That is one. What is denominator? That is one plus R C S. So it can be written like this. Now if I put numerator equals to zero, if I put numerator 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 equals to zero, I will get some values of S. That just assume I am getting S Z one, S Z two. These values I am getting. Okay, these values I am getting. So this is what we call zeros. And when I put denominator equals to zero, I will get these values S P one, S P two, and so on. This I call poles. Okay, numerator equals to zero that will give me zeros. Denominator equals to zero that will give me pole. We will see an example, or I can see an example here as well. Let's just assume my transfer function is this S plus three, S plus two, on S plus five, S plus. One. So what will be my zeros? My zeros will be minus three and minus two. If you put this equals to zero, minus three S value, you get minus three and minus two. What will be my poles? My poles will be minus five and minus one. Are you getting this point? I hope you are understanding. Right? This is just an example. Now we will show the example. We will solve the example in electrical circuit. So this is a circuit given to you. You have to find the poles and zeros. So what you will do? Not in the time domain. In the poles and zero, everything are defined in the Laplace domain. So first we will convert the circuit into Laplace. V in S and V not S. So. V not S by V in S. What will be V not S by V in S? At least for this circuit, you can remember it. Actually, it is one upon one plus R C S plus one. Uh, still, I am deriving it here. From the next time onwards, I will write it uh, directly. Okay, it is one upon R C S plus one. Everyone remembers it. One upon C S upon one upon C S plus R. So one upon R C S plus one we get. So this is my transfer function. So basically, my transfer function is one upon R C S plus one. So what is the zero here? No zero, zeros. No zero. Or we can say zero at infinity. Zero at s equals to infinity. What do I mean here? When there is no zero, that means you will say that there is a zero that is at infinity. And where is the pole? Pole is at s of pole is at minus one by R C. So this is one pole and no zero. I will write down a note here. Okay. For a transfer function, for a transfer function, number of zeros, number of zeros. And number of poles are always equal. Are always equal. But in the in this example, what I am saying, there is a pole at minus one by R C, and there is no zero. Look, there is a pole at one by R C. There is a zero as well, but the zero is at infinity. In this example.
in this example there is a pole at minus 1 by rc and a zero at s equals to infinity okay when there is no zero that means we are saying that there will be one zero at infinity are you getting my point let's just assume my transfer function was like this s plus 3 into s plus 2 so i have two zero here that is minus 3 sorry i have two poles these are the poles i will have two zeros as well and both of the zeros will be at infinity but in uh, like in general way sometimes we say that there are two poles and there is no zero okay in like while saying the things we can sometimes say that there are two poles that is minus 3 and minus 2 and there is no zero okay but but in actual the number of poles and zeros are always equal so if there are two poles there will be two zeros but if apparent zero is not there that means the zero is at infinity are you getting my point so this is what we this is actually the thing but this transfer function is given if they, they will ask you what is the location of pole that is minus 1 by rc what is the location of zero zero is at infinity or you can say there is no zero okay so this was a simple question now order of the circuit is defined by the number of poles of the transfer function okay or by the degree of ds ds degree of ts okay you will understand this point much deeper in control system okay there are two type of like open loop system and closed loop system so you will understand much deeper but for now you will just find the transfer function let's just assume your your transfer in the in your transfer function the denominator is of second degree second degree means something like this so that means there will be two poles if it is like this that means there will be three poles the maximum degree will be the number of poles are you getting my point okay and the order of the system has nothing nothing to do with the number of zeros okay i will write write this point order of the circuit has nothing to do with the number of zeros when you are defining the order you will only see at the poles if there are two poles second order if there are one pole first order okay and for a first order circuit only for a first order circuit what is the time constant time constant is the negative reciprocal of the location of pole okay i think i should have used a different color of pen here time constant is the negative reciprocal of the location of pole okay so let's just take this example that for a first order circuit the pole is at 1 by rc so the time constant will be what time constant will be what negative reciprocal of minus 1 by rc the time constant will be rc okay so what did you understand in this uh, in this lecture till now in this nine minutes what did you understand first we understood about the transfer function output by input with no any initial condition what is pole denominator equals to zero is the pole numerator equals to zero is the zero we saw this example then we understood one more thing that here you are getting one pole and no zero but in actual the number of poles and zeros are equal you are getting a pole at minus one by rc and the zero is at infinity okay then you studied about the order of the uh, order of a circuit so after finding the transfer function v not s by v in s or i not s by v in s or i v not s by i in, I in s you will just find the transfer function then you will see that how many then you will see that how many poles are there if there are two poles second order one pole first order three poles third order okay then you see so one more thing that for a first order circuit the time constant is the just the negative reciprocal of the pole okay so these things we have understood now we will see the example so these these transfer function are given to you v not s by v in s v not s by i in s i not s by v in s anything or y x by s x okay this transfer function is given to you and uh, you have to tell the order what is the order of the circuit first order what is the order of this circuit it is also first order while finding the order you only need to see at the denominator 
there is only one pole that means first order there is only one pole that means it is first order how many poles are there two poles one is at zero other one is at minus five this is second order and for this what is the time constant that is also second order now tell me what is the location of pole here minus one by rc what is the location of pole here minus r by l what is the location of pole here first pole is at zero and the second pole is you can write s as well i am writing frequency as well omega okay and the second pole is at minus five what is the location of pole you need to solve this okay you will get two poles omega p1 and omega p2 you need to solve this now tell the time constant only for first word order it is valid so what is the time constant negative reciprocal of this rc what is the time constant negative reciprocal of this l by r it is valid only for first order for those i can't define for these i can't define right so here i defined three things and here i defined two things only first order circuit only one pole pole is at minus one by rc time constant is the negative reciprocal first order pole is at minus r by l time constant is l by r okay second order two two poles are there first order two poles are there and here there is a zero as well what is the location of zero what is the location of zero here location of zero zero only if you put this equals to zero ls equals to zero you will get s equals to zero only so what is the location of zero here zero what is the location of zero you don't know here you will get two zeros omega z1 and omega z2 what is the location of zero in this transfer function in this transfer function what is the location of zero infinity right the location of zero will be infinity and in this transfer function as well location of zero will be infinity right because there is no zero here right this is the electrical circuit given to you you have to find the location of poles and zeros you have to tell the time constant first you will find the transfer function then you will tell the time constant you will tell the location of poles and zero you will define the order of the circuit so let's just solve the first circuit okay so for finding the order of the for finding anything first you need to write down the transfer function and for transfer function you need a certain input and you need a certain output r c1 c2 this is v not s this is v in s so i just need to write down the transfer function this is my circuit right okay this is r2 here not c2 this is r2 here r1 r2 is there for c2 as well you can find actually Tell me what is the equivalent of this? R1 into 1 upon Cs upon R1 plus 1 upon Cs. That would be equal to R1 upon R1 C1s plus 1. Right? Equivalent of this. R1 into 1 upon Cs upon R1 plus 1 upon Cs. So R1 upon R1 Cs plus 1. So what will be your V naught S by V in S? That would be R2 upon R2 plus R1 upon R1 C1 S plus 1. So R2 into R1 C1 S plus 1 into R1 R2 C1 S plus R1 plus R2. So that would be V naught S by V in S. So this is my transfer function. So here, what is the location of zero? That is minus one by R one C one. What is the location of pole? That is minus. R1 plus R2 yeah it is like this only upon R1 R2 into C1 so this is the location of pole and this is the location of 0 right what is the order of the circuit what is the order only one pole only one pole so it is 
फर्स्ट ऑर्डर वॉट इज द टाइम कॉन्स्टेंट टाइम कॉन्स्टेंट विल बीक्वल टू द नेगेटिव रेसिप्रोकल ऑफ द पोल दैट वुड बी आर वन आर टू अपॉन आर वन प्लस आर टू इन टू सी सो दिस इज द टाइम कॉन्स्टेंट राइट डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड द कंप्लीट सर्किट right first we found the equivalent then we found the transfer function in the transfer function we got to know that there is one pole and one zero that means it is the first order circuit if the, if it is the first order circuit then the negative reciprocal of the pole will be the time constant that's it so this is what we do also we have understood how to find the time constant so just short circuit the input so it would be r1 r2 r1 r2 will come in parallel into c so this is what is the time constant you can tell the poles and zeros intuitively as well okay what i am saying you can tell the poles and zeros location of pole and location of zero intuitively you don't need to do this thing okay you don't need to do this thing for writing poles and zeros okay you can tell intuitively as well by understanding the circuit but that's not important for gate aspirants so for them they don't need to learn because it will take a lot of time and then in the exam it will not be useful for you in the exam you will be solving by this thing only okay but uh, placement guys need to learn that so for them i will add a video okay later on so it will be a kind of big concept it will take you around 2 to 2 two, two hours uh, okay around 2 hours they will understand body plot and all these things so it will take you around 2 hours but for gate aspirant you just need to solve the question in the exam they will ask you what is the location of pole so you don't need to think there okay ki what will happen just find the transfer function and just see what is the location of pole that's it what is the location of zero just find the transfer function and just see okay but for placement guys i will tell the method intuitively how to think of the circuit how to think of the location of pole how to think of the location of zero but only for the placement guys not for gate aspirants okay so yeah the gate aspirant will be solving the problem like this and for placement guys how they they will solve they will make a separate video so now let's solve the second circuit okay now there are two outputs so for both of them we will we need to solve differently okay first the output is this and second the output is this okay and the input is current this time circuit b okay it has the transfer function has nothing to do that with the type of input even if it is a step input if, if, even if it is a, a, even if it is a impulse input even if it is a ramp input any input can be there pulse input can be there any input can be there right it has not, nothing to do with the type of the input are you getting my point i am just finding v not s by v in s so now if it is a impulse input it will be simply some value if it is a step input it will be 5 by s if it is a ramp input it would be 5 by s square right so this is this output or input it has nothing to do with the input okay so now this current input can be anything current uh, voltage input sorry it will be it can be ramp it can be step it can be impulse okay so i just need to find v not s by i in s so tell me one thing you can see one thing here what is that this i in s current will be flowing here it will be divided into two parts and then again we will have i in s here right like this i in s will be divided into two parts i1 s and i2 s right and then basically i in s is i1 s plus i2 s so this i in current is going into two parts then adding up and then again going out so what is v v not 1 s v not 1 s is simply i in s into r v not 1 s is v not 1 s by i in s is simply r so this is my transfer function so there are no poles no zeros and if there is no pole that means it is a zero order circuit 
so here i am getting zero order circuit with respect to the output across the resistance if i am taking the output across the capacitor or resistance r1 my order will be different so that's why i say there is nothing like the order of the circuit it is defined with respect to the output are you getting my point if i am saying order of the circuit that means i am referring to a particular output okay if this is my output i will say the order of the circuit is zero now in the second part only this was the first part now the same circuit will be there but my output will be different my output will be this v02 now what do i get that is the matter of concern now for the second circuit so now in the second circuit my output has been changed This is what I2S and this is what I1S and this is I in S. Now this I in S is getting divided into R1 and C1S, right? So and what was my output now? This is my output V02S. So what will be V02S? V02S would be V02S would be i1s into r are you getting my point or it can be i2s into 1 upon c1s so any one you can solve i1s into r or i2s into 1 upon c1s so i will solve i1s into r so what will be the value of i1s this i in s will be divided between r1 and 1 upon c1s so i in s will be divided between r1 and c1s 1 upon c1s so i1s would be the divided in the inverse proportion so it would be 1 upon c1s upon 1 upon c1s plus r1 into resistance r so basically it would be i in s into r upon not r1 yeah r1 it is it is r1 r1 upon r1 c1s plus 1 so what would be v not s by i in s v not s by i in s it would be r1 upon r1 c1s plus 1 r1 upon r1 c1s plus 1 are you getting my point how did i find the transformation very easy it is right just I in, I in S is divided into two parts, R1 and 1 upon C1S. So, I1S would be 1 upon C1S upon 1 upon C1S plus R1. So, it would be 1 upon R1 C1S plus 1 into R1 into I in S. So, basically V naught S by I in S is R1 upon R1 C1S plus 1. Okay? Right? Well and good. Simply the current division is there, nothing else. So, this is my transfer function. So, here what do you see? Location of pole is minus 1 by R1 C1. So, what is the order of the circuit now? Order is the first order. And what is the time constant? That is R1 C1. This is the answer, but one thing you understood here is that there is nothing like an order of the circuit. The order of the circuit is can change with respect to the different outputs. So, note you can write that the order of a circuit is defined with respect to a particular output particular output for one for case one v not 1 s by i in s it was zero order and for second this was our second case for second v not 2 s by i in s this was first order are you getting my point or not 
I hope you have understood it. The point that I wanted to deliver here. That the order of the circuit is dependent on the output that you are taking. If you are taking the output across R2 resistance, your order was 0. If you are taking the output across R1 resistance, your order was first. So sometimes even I have seen teachers saying that order of the circuit is first order. No meaning first order. Nothing like that. With respect to output, even if it can change with the with respect to the voltage and current as well. Like if I am uh, taking I not S as my output, so it can change as well. Although in this case it will not change, but we will see examples where it will change. Like what I am saying, I am saying that there is some circuit, what I am saying, like this is some circuit, okay, and there is this inductor, okay. Now I am collecting my V naught S with respect to this and I am applying some V in S, okay. So let's just assume my V naught S by V in S is coming as first order, okay. Now what I am doing in the same circuit, I am collecting some output. So now I am collect writing I naught S by V in S. Now necessarily it needs not to be first order, it can be second order as well. So with respect to voltage and current as well, it can change, okay. So nothing is like order of the circuit. It is always defined with respect to the output, with respect to a particular output. So we will we, we will see more into that. Like we will see more into like what is the order of the circuit. So there will be a 20, 20 minute video that we will be adding next to it. Okay. Th that's it for now. But in, in this lecture only, I will be adding a 20 minute video as well. So you watch that video, you, your concept will be more clear. And after that, we will be solving some problems. Okay. Thank you. So now I'll be adding the video. Okay. Hello everyone. So today we will see a very simple but a very interesting analysis. So these are seven circuits in front of you. You need to find the order of the all the circuit with respect to the given output. Like in first question, voltage output is given. Second voltage output is given. Third current output, output. Fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Okay. Just don't skip the video. I. I know many of you will think that this is a very simple problem, but there is something interesting. Okay. So just hold on to the video. So let's solve the first problem. So how do you actually find the order of a circuit? What do you do? To any storing element, you give an independent voltage. Let's just assume I am telling that Vc1 is V1. I am giving an independent voltage to Vc1. So this is this I am telling V1. So can I write the potential of C2 and C3? In terms of V1 and V in. V in, V in is also independent voltage that let's just assume it is V. So this is also independent voltage because it will be some 5 volt, 6 volt, 2 volt, 3 volt. So it, it is also independent voltage. Now I am giving from my side V1 voltage to C1. Now can I write the potential of Vc2 and Vc3 in terms of V1 and V in? For now I can't write. I have to give some independent voltage to Vc2 as well. So let's just assume I am giving V2 voltage. So Vc2 is V2. Now you can write Vc3 in terms of V1 and V2, right? So this is V1 minus V2. Vc3 is V1 minus V2. So these are independent voltage. Independent voltage. Independent voltage. And this is dependent voltage, right? This is depending on the voltage of Vc1 and Vc2. So only two storing element are there effective two storing element are there effective i should have written effective two storing element are there so it would be a second order circuit right effective two storing elements so it's a second order circuit right Like you can take any other example as well. Let's just assume this circuit is there. This simple circuit where you apply V in here and this is your V naught. C, C1 you can say, C2 you can say. So if you give V1 voltage to this capacitor C1, what will be the Vc2 voltage or V naught voltage? That would be V in minus V1. This is also independent, this is also independent. So only one voltage you had to give and that was V1. So this was first order circuit. Are you getting my point? You only had to give one independent voltage to a storing element that is V1 and uh, by giving V1 voltage to this capacitor, you could have written the voltage of capacitor C2 in terms of V in and V1 only. So now you can say that this, this is first order circuit and this is second order circuit. Okay. 
सो दिस वॉज द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन लेट्स कम टू द सेकेंड क्वेश्चन ओके आई जस्ट सोल्व द क्वेश्चन हेयर ओनली सो वॉट अबाउट दिस दिस इज अ फर्स्ट ऑर्डर सर्किट ओके लेट मी कॉपी इट दिस इज द फर्स्ट ऑर्डर सर्किट वाई सो इफ आई एम गिविंग वी वन वोल्टेज टू दिस वी सी वन इज वी वन ओके दैट इज इंडिपेंडेंट एंड वी सी टू वुड बी वी इन माइनस वी वन दैट इज डिपेंडेंट so only one storing element that means it is first order circuit first order circuit okay let's move on to the third example it is the same but at output you are collecting i note now your output is changed this is your output right now what did you understand for voltage for v note it was first order it was first order circuit okay so basically your v not s by v in s would have been first order circuit so there would be only one pole right s p1 plus 1 something like this there would be only one pole a dc gain would be there there can be a zero at a finite value and there can be a zero at infinity as well you don't really know but if you see the circuit there would be zero at minus 1 by rc uh, but now not solving the circuit i just assume there would be one zero okay at some finite value there would be some zero okay this is v not s by v in s or you can write v not s equal into like this you can write right so v not s is equals to a into something and v in s this this is the way now what will be your i not s i not s will simply be 1 by cs into v in s right oh sorry 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 not 1 by cs c dc by dt it is so cs into v in s so in case of capacitor the current is adding up as zero at omega equals to zero not a pole what did i say in case of a capacitor the current is adding up as zero at omega equals to zero not a pole so in case of capacitor in case of capacitor the currents the current adds up a zero at omega equals to omega z equals to zero not a pole and that's why the order remains the same the order remains the same as voltage output basically what would be your i not s i not s by v in s what would be your i not s by v in s that would have been a into cs s z c1 upon s p1 plus 1 okay so in case of capacitor so in case of capacitor when we say that uh, the order of the order of the circuit is first order first thing is that this statement is wrong because order is always defined with respect to the output okay so if you are collecting the output at c2 your order of the circuit is first order even if you are collecting the voltage the order is first even if you are collecting the current the order is always first why so because it is adding up a zero not a pole but in case of inductor it will change okay so this thing you understood and the second thing is that let's just assume just let's just forget about this circuit just think anything let's just think about something else let's just assume in case of a capacitive circuit your v not s would have been something like this a some zero is there and you have a pole at t goes to zero not t goes to zero you have a pole at omega goes to zero 
okay so what is this this is the second order circuit right second order right because there are two poles now if you had been collecting the current here if you were writing the expression of current what would be the order of the circuit at the same capacitor at some capacitor at some capacitor here this is some capacitor and you are collecting your output and this is the expression of output now okay and in the same capacitor you are collecting your current so what will be the expression of current i note s that would be c s a s z 1 upon s into s p 1 v in s simply s to s would have been cancelled the order would have become first order are you getting my point you are collecting your output at the same point at the same capacitor first you are collecting voltage output now you are collecting current output in case of voltage output your order was second but in case of current output your order is first why so because a zero and a pole at omega equals to zero are getting cancelled are you getting my point so whenever you are saying that circuit is second order with respect to the voltage you can't say the circuit will be second order for current as well why you can't say that because you need to check if you are having a zero at omega goes to if you are having a pole at omega goes to zero or not because the current will add up a zero at omega goes to zero did you understand the point what the point that i wanted to deliver here the current will add up a zero at omega goes to zero so when you are writing the voltage just make sure that if you are having a pole at omega goes to zero if you are having a pole at omega goes to zero and you are saying that your circuit is second order then when you go to the current there would be a zero at omega goes to zero so that pole and zero will get cancelled and effectively your order will become first order circuit okay so directly you can't say that if my voltage is second order my current would also be second order you have to check okay but if my voltage is first order and i am not having a pole at omega goes to zero my current would be surely first order here you had pole at 1 by r c1 plus c2 right minus 1 by r c1 plus c2 so there you you had your pole so this is not the pole at omega goes to zero right this is a pole at a some some value so that's why the order didn't change are you getting my point now let's let's just go to third this is the third circuit we have studied now let's just go to this circuit so what what would you do v l v l1 you will give v1 voltage independent voltage you are giving v l1 you are giving v1 voltage so let's just assume this is v1 so what would be your v l2 that would be v in minus v1 right this is independent and the other one is dependent dependent you could have given v v v2 to this to this and then v v l1 would have been v in minus v2 okay anything you could have given so only one effective element only one effective storing element one effective storing element so that means only one effective storing element that means uh, it is first order circuit okay it is first order circuit now the same circuit is there but uh, you are collecting the output current so for voltage it was first order circuit right for voltage it was first order circuit i don't really know where is my zero where is my pole anything i don't really know so i will just write down the expression yeah, so i will be having a dc gain a single pole right and a zero as well i don't know the location of pole i don't know the location of zero okay 
so my v naught s will simply be a into s z one p upon s p one plus one into v in s. Now tell me what will be my i naught s? I naught s would be one upon l s into v naught s, right? This would be my i naught s. This is my v naught. What would be my i naught s? That would be one upon l s. Into V naught s. So, what is this current is doing? Current adds up a pole. Adds up a pole at omega equals to zero. So now the current is adding up a pole. So what is happening? Now the order of the circuit will be increased. For voltage it was first order, but for current it would be second order. Are you getting my point? So what would be your I naught s? Your I naught s would be a upon l s s z one upon s p one plus one. This is a second order circuit. So for current, this is a second order circuit. Okay. So every time whenever they are asking you the order of the circuit, what you will do? First you will uh, first you will calculate for voltage. So you will see that this is the first order circuit. For current, what you will do? You will say that I naught s would be one upon L s into V naught s. So now the current is adding up a. What is the current is doing? The current is adding up a zero at omega equals to zero. Sorry, the current is adding up a pole at omega equals to zero. So now there are two poles. So this is a second order circuit. Now one more thing you have to take care. That is, you should not have. A zero at omega equals to zero. In case of voltage output, in case of voltage output, you should not have a zero at omega equals to zero. Let's just assume your circuit, your transfer function for voltage was something like this: A S upon S P one plus one. Now, what would be for current into some V N S? What would be what it would be for current? One upon L S into A S upon S P one plus one. Into V in S, so this S and S would have been cancelled. This is first order, right? And this would have been also first order. So you always need to check one thing: that in case of voltage output, I should not have a zero at omega equals to zero. Okay. In case of inductor and in case of capacitor, what you were doing? We will take this example. Okay. And in case of capacitor, what you were calculating, you were seeing that in case of voltage, I should not have a pole at omega equals to zero. If I am having a pole at omega equals to zero, my current will cancel that pole. So my current will cancel that pole. So effectively, my order will be reduced. Okay. So smartly, you need to check. For voltage, you can check. It is a very simple method. But for writing, while writing for the, uh, while writing for the current, you surely need to check what is the location of pole. In case of capacitor, you need to check the location of pole, and in case of inductor, you need to check the location of zero. Are you getting my point? Now let's just take another example. It will be more clear to you. Okay. So this is a very simple circuit, simple RL circuit. This very simple RL circuit. So let's just take this very simple RL circuit. So. What is V not as by V in S for this? We will calculate for voltage and for current as well. So, if you give V one voltage to inductor, uh, or you don't need to give V one voltage because you can al already see that there is only one effective element. So this would be first order circuit, right? You already know this is a first order circuit. So what will be your uh, why then? What will be your V not as by V in S? That would be L S upon R plus L S, right? L S upon R plus L S. So V not S would be L S upon R plus L S into V in S. You are having a zero at omega equals to zero. Now what will happen to current? Circuit F and G all together. Now what will be your current now? This is a first order circuit. Current would be one upon L S into 
into v not s right now someone will say this is already a first order circuit and this is adding up a zero what i am saying this is already a first order circuit and this is adding up a pole adding up another pole at omega equals to zero so effectively this is second order but this is wrong why why is it wrong because this v not s is also having v not s is having a zero at omega equals to zero so there is pole zero cancellation there is pole zero cancellation are you getting my point so what will be your i not s here your i not s was 1 upon ls into v not s your v not s was 1 upon ls into ls upon r plus ls so your i not s r plus ls into v in s so your i not s would have been 1 upon r plus ls v in s so that means it is a first order circuit so for current and for voltage the order is same why is it same because there is pole zero cancellation okay so that's why i took this example like this is a very easy example you will think why why am i taking this example because all, everyone knows that for voltage and for both current the circuit is first order but the reason is that that there is a pole zero cance cancellation here for voltage for voltage it was first order but for current it was second order are you getting my point for current it was second order so you can't write that exponential equation for current here because that is this is a second order circuit but in case of voltage you can write that exponential equation because this is a first order circuit in case of voltage okay and uh, this this was for this and here for voltage and current for both it, it was first order but if i can think of any example i will try to think if i can think of any example where i have a uh, where i have a pole at omega equals to 0 then the things would change where i have a pole at omega equals to 0 so these kind of transfer function which circuit will give me this kind of transfer function i need to think which circuit will give me and if i think i will add up in the video so let me think first okay yeah so actually i tried thinking about the circuit but i couldn't get any okay i tried multiple rc circuits but it's really tough to make a pole at omega goes to zero okay not tough like like i shouldn't say it is tough but i i think it is impossible okay if anyone has another idea he can contact me on linkedin or telegram so look what do i want actually i want a transfer function like this right i want a transfer function like this this is what i want right now if my input is a, a if my input is a step function so what would happen it will give me something like this input is some v okay v by s so s square so this would give me a there would be one exponential and one ramp so like the response would be the response would be unstable because this will give me a ramp response right this will give me a ramp s square will give me a ramp response are you getting my point do you understand what i am trying to deliver here the response will be ramp so i don't think there is a uh, possibility to make the circuit okay what do i really want i want an rc circuit that is having a pole at omega equals to zero so if you can think of the circuit please do let me know okay on linkedin or telegram okay so the concept that i wanted to deliver in this uh, lecture uh, that has been delivered i and i hope you have understood it right so i just tried to deliver the conclusion is that if you know the uh, if you know the order of the circuit for voltage output it not 
it's not necessary for the current output the order will be same for current output you will have to check okay also you need to keep mind keep in mind the pole at omega equals to zero in case of capacitor and in case of inductor you need to keep in mind the zero at omega equals to zero got it so just revise it once again and it will be all clear to you okay thank you